In this video, I'm going to be sharing my screen with you to show the entire city of Chesapeake and the neighborhoods in them. I'm going to walk you through so you can see what areas are here, what they're like, and I can show you the pros and cons of each area if you plan on living in Chesapeake, Virginia. And we're starting right now. Hey, my name is Sam Santalone and I'm a real estate agent in the Hampton Roads area. I do videos every week about living and moving to Chesapeake in the areas around here. And I help people from all over the world move to this area. It's what I do. So if you have any questions about living here or how to relocate or here the best, reach out to me. I have my contact information in the description and I'll do whatever I can to help you. Now, we're gonna to talk today about Chesapeake, the city of Chesapeake and what it's like to live here. But I'm gonna share my screen with you so you can see the map, the whole map of Chesapeake. I'll walk you through the entire city from one side all the way to the other uh, so you can get a full perspective of the city. So let's get into it. First, we're gonna look at this, the, the overarching view of Chesapeake. Look how big Chesapeake is. And in Chesapeake, there are a lot of different types of environments. And based on where you are in Chesapeake, you might have a totally different life experience. So we're gonna start on one side, and I'm gonna talk about that and go all the way around so you can see those differences. Now, let's start on the eastern side. Looking at the general shape of Chesapeake, it's almost like a horseshoe. If you look on these, these sections where most of this white section is, if you look at where all the roads are, you'll see like a horseshoe shape. And that horseshoe shape uh, goes through different, totally different parts of the area. So if you talk to someone who lives in Chesapeake and you get advice about where to live in Chesapeake, uh, that advice will, will change or should change depending on where in Chesapeake you are. So if someone says, I love Chesapeake, you have to find out for sure exactly where they're talking about. And as you go further down to the south side, you've got the, the green sections, mostly country and preserved or wildlife uh, areas like the Dismal Swamp on the left-hand side over here. So let's start on the eastern side of Chesapeake. You've got some uh, sections here. This is all Virginia Beach over here on the, on the east. But if you just cross that red line, this goes into an area called Greenbrier. And I wanna talk about Greenbrier first because this is what used to be like the epicenter of Chesapeake back in the late 80s and 90s. This is where I spent a lot of my time in, in my childhood, going to shopping and doing all, all kinds of stuff I did back in this in this Greenbrier area. There are two streets I want to talk about specifically first. Greenbrier Parkway is this one road here. So this one road here where all, all the, the shopping is. Greenbrier Mall, uh, Best Buy, all the big box stores, all in this, this general Greenbrier area. And then going towards the west, you've got Battlefield Boulevard just going north and south as well. So they parallel each other, right? But in this whole corridor from uh, Greenbrier East, East in Greenbrier West. I don't see a name for it there. It's there, Greenbrier West. This whole section has shopping. Um, anything you're gonna need is gonna be in this general Greenbrier area. Now, um, there are some great neighborhoods as well in here uh, alongside of this section too, and we'll, we'll talk about those. But generally speaking, if you're gonna be moving in the Greenbrier section, you can start, now there's condos in the 200s, but you're gonna be going up from there, townhouses too, but then uh, single family houses usually go in the upper twos to ver very baseline, more, mostly 300s, 400s, 500s and up, depending on what kind of neighborhood you like. Um, and if you notice, there are also some lakes in here too, which uh, if you do like lake style living or houses on the lake, there are a few lakes you can find some houses on, but it's very hard to find. But I like some areas over here, plantation lakes over here on this section here near uh, Volvo Parkway uh, in Kempsville Road, and also a couple others near there. One on is called Simon Drive, this one street here. This is Emerald Forest and Emerald Lakes. Emerald Lakes is right here. Next to that is Emerald Forest, right next to the Greenbrier Country Club. I love this section because for what you're getting, you're getting a very unique kind of house, but the price ranges are about in the sixes, upwards over a million dollars. It depends on what you're looking for. But for what you're getting, it's very unique and the, the location is rare to find that kind of style house. Otherwise, you have a lot of houses that were built in the 90s, 2000s, earlier than that, 80s, 70s, that are more like that suburban three, four bedroom, two and a half bath house in that price range or the fours, lower $500,000 price range. Um, but if you go down further south from there, you also see this road called Butt Station Road. But Station also has some new construction. You'll see the, the development line from Greenbrier. As they ran out of places to build in Greenbrier, they went further down south. And that's why you see less and less down here, but you'll see more, more neighborhoods. But Station is near Clearfield. There's some neighborhoods in here that I really like. Um, They're all through here in that $600,000 
give or take range, 650. Um, nice houses, some five bedrooms, real nice houses in proximity to you're getting you getting access to this uh, Interstate 64 and 464. So I like we almost moved here ourselves because it is close enough to it's, you get a country relaxed kind of feel, but also close access to other roadways. But you find a lot of areas in this Great Bridge East Butt Station area, as we're going to talk uh, later, ha has a similar feel to this Butt Station section as well. And that you'll you'll see like the, the, the again it's like the development line between the commercial, the shopping over in Greenbrier starts going into country as you go down further south. So as you cross over this North Landing River here, you get a couple bridges, but mainly the one I want to talk about right now is the Glocks uh, Bridge, which is where Great Bridge starts. This is like the gateway to the south part of Chesapeake. So if you go down to the south part of Chesapeake, you're going to find a lot more country and a lot more suburbs. This is, it depends on what you like, but I personally like this area because it has, it has a country feel. It has a relaxed, like small town feel, but there's a lot of still accessible stuff, some lot of shopping. I want to talk specifically going down into exact, like, let's, let me drop this down here. Battlefield Boulevard, I'm gonna show you something. Go across the bridge, you'll notice that the feel of this area is, it's got a lot of green space, right? There's that bridge I was telling you about, Locks Bridge. But if you go across there, you, you see first, you're like, oh, not much traffic, it seems pretty quiet. But the main thing I wanna mention here is that this Battlefield Boulevard Road does back up a lot because the there are only two main uh, lanes on this street. And so this, this connects, Battlefield connects with this road called Cedar Road. And Cedar Road and Battlefield Boulevard, this is in a very, very busy intersection. And I say that because this road, Cedar Road, where are we at? Cedar Road connects all the way across to the uh, western side of Chesapeake, well, the, going towards that southwestern corner, right? Well, Cedar Road is like the key that unlocks the other western side of that south section. So the further west you go, you'll get more of the same over in the Cedar Road area. But the, the primary intersection that you'll keep running into is a Cedar Road and Battlefield Boulevard intersection, and it can back up a lot. But that is a big traffic area, but if, you, if you're okay with all that, you've got some great neighborhoods around here and some cool, like, just, you know, I'll, I'll drop the link down here and drop it down here. This is Johnstown Road in Mount Pleasant. And you got a lot of, a lot of green space. See, so you have strip malls, older strip malls. Um, but it's kind of scattered as far as what kind of you know, buildings and shops are here. But like, see, this is a good, good example of, of just the older style. This is the original Great Bridge uh, High School a long time ago. But as you go further down south, it keeps going into more uh, suburban, like this is what was developed in the 90s and the 2000s. Lots of subdivisions, lots of houses, all this section near, near Johnstown Road. So if you want country, if you want that relaxed feel, uh, and you don't mind driving about you know, 15, 20 minutes, for example, to Greenbrier, you love, would probably love this Green, Great Bridge, Great Bridge East area, even closer to Butch Station over on this whole section here, even now Mount Pleasant. These are amazing neighborhoods. So I spent a lot of time in my childhood in this area near Etheridge Manor Boulevard. And in Etheridge Manor, this area has some good neighborhoods too, near the Blackthorn Drive. Um, there's Centerville Turnpike. This whole corridor, I have several clients that are moving in here that have lived in here. I have so, so many friends that have lived in this area. Um, that It's really, really nice. Talking fours, 500,000 plus range is 600 in some cases, but it's very, it's, it does have that suburban, that uh, relaxed feel, and it has a country element too, and a lot of which we would call here Great Bridge Specials, which are like that ranch style. Let's see if I can drop a, let's see if I can drop a uh, uh, point so you can see. I'm gonna see if I can find a Great Bridge Special. Yep, there's one right there. Great Bridge Special. <laughs> it's like a, it's a brick ranch, and you'll see a lot of brick ranches in this section of Great, of Great Bridge in Chesapeake. I like these, some people don't like them, and it's kind of a personal preference, but you get a well-built house and a nice floor plan for what you're getting in that three to four, sometimes 500,000 plus range. Um, you'll find some houses that are bigger, and they could be up in the sixes and sevens and eights, and that, that does happen as well, but you, you'll find some nice houses in this Great Bridge area, and as well as the demand for school district, for Great Bridge, as well as Hickory, which is next door, that's, those are also big deals. Quickly, I'm going to briefly mention over in this section on the butt station, the question is, well, what if I go over and find something over here? I might find something cheaper. Well, I want to say one thing. Fentress Airfield is this one airstrip right here. And if you're near this Fentress Airfield, and just similar to what you you may have heard me talk about with the Naval uh, Ocean Naval Air Station on this side, this uh, air station is extremely loud. And so you'll hear jet noise quite a bit around there. So I wouldn't necessarily... Um, 
You might see a better deal over there and think, well, I can get close to the beach, I can get close to other stuff, but the jet noise, factor that in, it does matter. And if the further away you go, the less that becomes a factor, but it, it does matter. Now further down here you go, down let's say going all the way down towards like there's Bunch Walnuts Road down the south part of Benefit, there's the south of Johnstown. This is all country and a lot of septic tanks and well systems. So once you go just south of Great Bridge here into the Hickory Battlefield line here, you're gonna see mostly, if basically you're gonna see all septic and well systems. So if you like a house that has that is straight up country, this this whole area is what I think what you'd be looking for on this even even the side south of Butt Station over over even towards Route 17 this whole area is country 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 anything from the you know less than an acre half an acre you can get you know houses still in the threes sometimes but mainly it's 400 plus the bigger houses five six seven eight hundred dollars or, or eight hundred thousand upwards way over that because it depends on the acres depends on the size house and all that kind of stuff but you'll see more custom size custom built houses in here this can be a big benefit if you like that kind of thing and so if you want that country feel go down there south let's go back up north though and go towards the cedar road area this is like the south central area of chesapeake i like this area because there, first of all, the school districts are still in high demand. There are some areas here that I really like a lot. Uh, one specifically is called uh, Las Gaviotas, which is right here near the Chesapeake Golf Club. This area for which you're getting about fours, sometimes a little bit under, like under five. Um, real nice neighborhood, not like great, like plain community. So you get that four, two and a half, that, uh, you know, very functional floor plans, nice neighborhood. People love it in here. And you've got like real nice amenities nearby. One of my favorite restaurants, Burrito Perdido right here. But this Cedar Road area gives you the shopping you need without having to go all the way over, for example, to Greenbrier. Um, but then if you go further uh, west, this is where it gets a little bit interesting because you'll see Dominion Boulevard, it, eventually if you go back up this way, you'll see a toll road. So you've got, if you're down in this section, you've got access up north to both dire two directions. But if you go the closest direction, you're gonna be paying a toll to get across that bridge right here. So the Veterans Bridge, see that right there? So, so if you do wanna go around to save the money, you might end up driving around going east and back up north, going up towards the bypass. So just keep that in mind if you do ever want to live in this section and wanna get easy access up north. But in this, this area, you've got more country down the south side towards the Dismal Swamp. But this area over here, see it? this uh, uh, George Washington Highway? This becomes what's called Deep Creek as you get into this section here. This area completely is, is completely different than the rest of South Chesapeake. This is a little bit older. This has a little bit more of a, a has a more of a commercial feel to it, an older style, like some of the like I'll drop a I'll drop a map on here for uh, George Washington Highway so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but it's got you know the main road is busy uh, and it also has just like a kind of a scattered feel to it. There's no real symmetry, like a random old houses along the road. Um, it just doesn't have as much of a specific identity as other parts of South Chesapeake to me. Um, but at the same time, uh, you can get a better deal for a house over on this side as well. And so part of that reason is because the school district is not as highly ranked online, in my opinion. If it factors in, I would do some research to find out uh, as well. But Culpeper Landing is another good neighborhood over here, a newer neighborhood. If you like that newer style house but don't want to pay as much, I would check out Culpeper Landing. One big thing factoring in all through this Deep Creek section, even in this area of Elizabeth River, is there are some flooding issues that can pop up along the water. Um, it's not, not full-fledged as you go further down here, not as big of a deal, but right near the water in some parts here, in this area of um, north, um, well, north of Cedar, there's some spots near Bell's Mill that can be, get a little bit of a troublesome uh, uh, in terms of flooding. But going further west, um, this whole section uh, it has is spotty, but it's it's there are some hit and miss spots. Deep Creek North taking away the flooding aspect of it. You'll see like once you cross that line, this is all Chesapeake. It's not. It still has like an element of, of that South Deep Creek area. Like so, in general, if you say that you live in Deep Creek, you're talking about that west southwestern corner, and the, the school districts aren't as highly ranked. But again, it's all about bang for buck over here for prices for houses. So you can get all sorts of different types of houses. So just factor that in. If you see that there are pr cheaper prices, there's always a reason, right? Keep in mind, there's always a reason why house prices are cheaper. So I'm gonna, we're gonna keep going uh, straight over from 64 over to 664 towards this Western Branch section. This is where it gets a little bit more in demand for school district as well as houses. This I love this area, Western Branch. And I don't feel like it gets as much recognition as I feel like it should. Some of the benefits to being in Western Branch, a, the school district is, are highly ranked or more in demand, I'd say, uh, in terms of online publications that you can look up online. Um, that's one thing. Another thing is that it's also easy access to interstates. So if you've got 264 here, 
64 goes over towards the rest of Chesapeake and Virginia Beach, as well as 664. 664 takes you up towards Hampton and Newport News. So if you, for example, work at Langley, you work in Newport News, you work in even the south section of Hampton, going up further north towards Williamsburg, uh, and you don't mind the extra drive, you don't have to deal with the biggest issue with driving to the peninsula, which is the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel over here. You drive across the Monitor Merrimack Bridge Tunnel, which is still a tunnel and can back up, but it's not nearly as big of a deal as over here. So you can get easier access to the peninsula as well as going towards Route 17, towards the James River Bridge. And the James River Bridge is another access point up there as well. But this whole section of Western Chesapeake going towards this Northeastern Suffolk area is an awesome, underrated, uh, to me, a neat section of neighborhoods. It's mostly neighborhoods, schools and neighborhoods, and some shopping too. You got some shopping over the, near the Chesapeake Square Mall and some other big box stores nearby. But in general, a lot of these are neighborhoods and some good for the price, you can get a lot for the price. For example, you can go towards Point Elizabeth Drive, uh, you get some nice uh, houses near the water or on the water, and for the price, not too bad. You know, you're talking around like the fours, oftentimes like upper threes, lower fours, mid to upper fours, and now we're getting, we're creeping into the fives in a lot of cases, even for like those four, two and a half, 2,700 square foot range. Uh, but it's starting to increase as the rest of the area is as well. But this whole area has a feel of the South Chesapeake area, similar to it. Um, it has that same kind of suburban feel, um, but it has also more access to the northern sections of town, so it does have some appeal there. And uh, so I'd say cost, you can get a better deal in Western Branch to me than you can in South Chesapeake. However, in terms of school districts, people often will go be more aggressive in these South Chesapeake areas. One of the reasons is because of the school district. Uh, people like, like the Hickory, Grassfield, and Great Bridge school districts a lot. And Western Branch is, to me, I like it, but again, look at the rankings, you'll see a little bit of a difference there. We've gone towards Western Branch, we've gone around the horseshoe here. Now, let's go back towards this very interesting area that I don't think people talk about as much as they should. A, I think there are some, some good spots in here as well as it's good to have education to know what is here and what uh, how, it, uh, how it connects to the rest of the area. This area is called South Norfolk. It is not in Norfolk, it is called, it's Chesapeake. It's like really central Chesapeake, right? Um, it's called South Norfolk based on past when it used, used to be called Norfolk. This section is more of like the older style houses. You've got a lot of Victorian or a lot of colonial houses. Um, more closer together. Um, there are lots of, it's kind of hit and miss in here. So like you got, it can feel very old, it can feel a little bit run down in some cases to be honest with you, to me. You're near some railroad tracks over here and you're just uh, uh, east of Avalon. Um, and so, But for the prices, you're talking anywhere in the, sometimes 100s, low $200,000 into the threes and fours for some, some newer construction. If you want new construction to keep the prices low, this is a place you can look at. However, again, if you're getting something cheaper, there's always a reason why. You're often giving up a neighborhood or um, a size or condition. And if it's cheaper and it's the great condition and a great uh, size, you might be giving up the demand of a certain neighborhood that other people might not care about or might not want to be in. So if you go further north of here, you got places like Berkeley, Campostella. This whole section that connects to Portsmouth and Norfolk has that same kind of older feel to it that definitely is totally, totally different than this whole section of Chesapeake down further towards Greenbrier. And so this whole area, again, the cheapest price uh, in all of Chesapeake. If you go further towards the east though, this section over here near Sparrow Road, or Sparrow, called Norfolk Highlands. I'd say this is one of the most underrated neighborhoods in all of Chesapeake because you can get a, a you know, three, four bedroom house under three, 325 in a lot of cases, and it's, you know, you get a very accessible, convenient location. The drawback here is gonna be a the school district uh, ranking. The same goes for other areas uh, near 464 too. School districts is, are not highly ranked. Um, but you get easy access uh, to other parts of the area as well as some real nice waterfront in some spots too. For example, off of Sparrow Road, um, even going further um, uh, east, just, this is where the line is right there. That's where it turns into Virginia Beach. But if you go down further south, this area, again, not it's not super high demand as far as the price goes. It's not gonna drive, the prices aren't like super high, but a functional house 
in that lower more like three, 325 and under price range, generally speaking. But one other area I wanna talk about is just near the south of the South Norfolk area is an area called Great Bridge Boulevard. And this area called Great Bridge Boulevard is unique because it's very close to the Greenbrier area we just talked about in Battlefield Boulevard. So it has easy access to that. However, it is in the Oscar Smith School District, which is a lower ranked school district online. And so that does keep the prices lower sometimes. And there are some a lot older neighborhoods in here and sometimes some flooding issues around the water. I want to talk about a couple neighborhoods though specifically. One's the preserve that's over here just um, near Kempsville, near a section of Kempsville and Battlefield, but it's right here. It comes right off of Great, uh, Great Ridge Boulevard and it is some awesome, it's an awesome neighborhood. So you got the older houses on Great Ridge Boulevard and then you got the preserve right here. Go right into the neighborhood. It's, it's, it's really, it's great. The houses are cool, like very unique. Uh, uh, contemporary slash colonial style. Each house has its own uniqueness to it. I love this neighborhood and it has access to a, a, a trail that goes back out to the river. You can sit out, there's a gazebo near the river. This is an awesome neighborhood, talking around that fives, sixes, $700,000 price range. There's also some condos that are in that lower price range here that also has dock access if you have a boat. Um, then in one other neighborhood I wanna talk about is Riverwalk. And I used to live in Riverwalk and the Riverwalk is interesting because you see that it's a big cul-de-sac. Got the Riverwalk Parkway goes all the way around and it connects on two sides to Great Bridge Boulevard. And there are different types of neighborhoods in here. So you can literally have your first house in here, townhouse, condo, many condos in here near the front. And eventually you can upgrade, get a three or four bedroom house, like in that upper $300,000, $400,000 price range, and then get a house in the fives or sixes. And as you go further back into the neighborhood, these houses up here and here are sixes, sevens, and then near the water, eight over a million dollars. And there are some condos in here down on the, wa the water too that are really cool. Some of my favorites for view and for the price, awesome. Under 300,000, a lot of these are, are these condos I'm talking about. They're, they're wonderful, sometimes just over 300. Uh, but this whole section here is great. And you could essentially get your first house and keep stay in here and literally retire in Riverwalk and never leave. I lived in Riverwalk for about three years. So I, one of the reasons I like Great Bridge Boulevard is because this whole section is because you can get easy access to 64, you're gonna say 64, 464, and 264. You can literally be in downtown Norfolk in about 12 to 14 minutes if there's no traffic and you're crossing that bridge right there. And you can be in Virginia Beach in about less than 15 minutes also. I love the central aspect of this area. Drawback again is the demand of the school district, check your rankings, do some research to make sure you know what you like and what you don't like. Uh, but then as you go further west into this section near Great Bridge Boulevard, it's, it's again back to a little more run, more run down, a little bit more commercial, a lot of commercial buildings over in this section and some houses sprinkled in here, some neighborhoods sprinkled in here. But um, again, prices are a little bit lower, a little bit lower over there, uh, as well as uh, some other townhouses too. The thing that the Chesapeake does not have is downtown. And I will say the one area that is becoming the closest to downtown is a spot between Greenbrier Park way in that Battlefield Boulevard. Daughtry has headquarters here in uh, in, Green, in Chesapeake and Greenbrier, and you can start seeing some a little bit of a skyline built. You know, they had a couple big buildings being built right off of Eden Way and Volvo Parkway, and you'll see this whole section it has a little bit of a newness happening to it that has been rejuvenated from like the 90s feel that it used to have. So there are some newer um, restaurants, some newer apartments even in here. Um, it's just a nice feel, and I do think that this will kind of come bring up the, the, the area around it even more than it had been already. I love getting into the details of what it's like to live here because I love this area. And so if you have any questions, reach out to me at any point. I have my contact information in the description. And if you have any questions or want to learn more about living in this area, you can subscribe to my channel or check out more videos. Got one right here. And I will see you on the next video.